The genre known in Britain as music hall was the first form of mass entertainment created by the working classes. Its raw beginnings were in the streets and pubs of 19th century London, and it was never really considered respectable. And yet, by 1900, it was being performed in opulent theatres to huge audiences from all walks of life. But of course it did have a close cousin in vaudeville in America um, and of course many of the uh, American vaudeville stars um, and film stars even um, started their life on the music hall stage. Um, people like Charlie Chaplin and Stan Laurel, originally Stan Jefferson. So one of the most famous types of musical performers, these comic songs, were the Costa comics, these Costa Monger comics, these London street sellers, characters, uh, people like Gus Elan singing these songs about the trials and tribulations of being a, a working class Londoner. Music Hall featured magicians, acrobats and ventriloquists, but at its heart were always songs. More often than not, these songs were humorous or satirical, others were sentimental or patriotic, and more than a few would have been blatantly sexual, if the authorities of the time had allowed it. Instead, they were full of bawdy innuendos and double entendres. One of the most fascinating of the later music hall performers was Max Champion. We know very little about him, except that he was born in Whitechapel in the East End of London in 1882, and is thought to have been a relation, possibly nephew, of the great Victorian entertainer Harry Champion, originator of such songs as I'm Henry the Eighth I Am and Boiled Beef and Carrots. Max had no such success. Though he shared the stage with some big stars, he never reached the top of the bill. Possibly he was ahead of his time. His songs, with their unusual musical and lyrical twists and turns, may have sounded strange to an Edwardian audience. Only one recording of Max Champion survives, of a song called The Bishop and the Actress. To an English audience, that we know what that reference is. If someone says something perfectly innocent and someone else says, oh, as the actress said to the bishop, or as the bishop said to the actress, it's a way of making a perfectly innocent statement um, become something obscene. The style is very much of the time, but sometimes the lyrics are quite timeless, so they could really be about now. It's like Max Champion was speaking from the early 20th century to us directly in the early 21st. Try to get a grip, relax the upper lip, keep it gloomy and be glad. Health and safety is your only wealth. Try to be chafed, be save me from myself. I'm the scum, I'm the fool. What's me mum? Give me someone to send me back to school. Health and safety, what's it all about? The gasper out, knock me down, lock me down, stupid and flipping egg. It's always the working man gets it in the neck. Champion songs were almost lost forever. That is, until sheet music started to turn up. Some of it published, but most handwritten, presumably by Max himself. In 2014, two songs were found in Valletta Malta. No one has any idea how they got there. Two years later, no fewer than nine songs were found inside a decrepit wardrobe in the back of an antique shop in Bethnal Green, East London. More songs were then found in the attic of a boarding house in Margate, and, most intriguingly, in an old farmhouse in Zonnebeek, Belgium. This would tend to support the theory that Max disappeared after 1913 because, like so many of his countrymen, he went to fight in the First World War and never returned. Perhaps he was still writing songs in the trenches. 
So the musical era came to uh, an end in the aftermath of the First World War, when uh, younger audiences were moving towards um, those American influences of ragtime, jazz, and most importantly, moving pictures. By 2019, enough Max Champion songs had been recovered for producer Joe Jackson to arrange and record a whole album. The humorous side of it, especially was what appealed to me about these songs because they really sound like they're from an era when people went out and had fun. And I mean, obviously a lot of just ordinary working people had worse lives then, you know, in 1910 or so than they do now. But nevertheless, it didn't stop them from going out in their thousands to music halls to sing along and laugh with performers um, who were great characters. And uh, that spirit of fun was something that it, it was, you know, really refreshing to delve into and try to bring that back. Because I think we need, we need some of that spirit. We need to bring it back. What a racket presents 11 of Max Champion's songs for the first time in more than a century. Living in the city, it's dirty and it's gritty, it's smoggy and it's sooty and it stinks. <laughs> 